Okay, so good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. So this morning's reading will come out of Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. We're going to talk about Paul's warning, true gospel versus false gospel. Before we get into this really quick reading study, start out by asking the Lord a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, the love you, Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn such as having conquered several desires. That we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You Christ of God, your life, and to you your glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So graze his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So Galatians chapter one, we'll share the screen over. Got everything set up. So we're in Galatians chapter one this morning. A very, very interesting read. I like to read this quite a bit. So Galatians chapter 1, let's get zoomed in. Let's read the first five verses before we move on. Look at the greeting. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Galatians chapter 1, starting in verse 1. And it says, Paul, right? Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what's happening right here in the first two verses? At this time in Galatia, there were these people called the Judaizers. And they were invading Galatia at this time. And they argued that Paul was not a true apostle. But as we see, Paul introduces himself with a threefold defense. Number one. The source of his apostleship is God. Look at verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So right there in Paul's introduction. So the source of his apostleship says he's coming from God. Two, he has witnessed the resurrect. He has witnessed the resurrected Christ. All right. In Acts chapter 9, verse 27, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. The next thing, his apostleship is con confirmed by all the brethren. Look at verse 2. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. An additional proof of Paul's apostleship is that he founded the churches of Galatia. Verse 2. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. In verses 3 and 5, look at those again. It says, Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So Paul's greeting is showing us the true gospel, which he is defending in this epistle. Several points may be drawn from this greeting. Number one, the true gospel comes from God himself. Look at verse three. Grace to you and peace from God 
God the Father, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. So true gospel comes from God himself, verse 3. Two, Christ gave himself for our sins, not only in his death, but in every phase of his incarnation, from conception to his ascension. Right? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, beautiful. Next point. Christ delivers us from the present evil age. Right? Let's go back. Look at verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. So Christ, so point three, Christ delivers us from this present evil age, verse four, to enter the age to come. Number four, this deliverance is accomplished according to the will of God, verse four, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. Beautiful. Beautiful. The Son, in his human nature, cooperating with the divine will. So the Son, in his human nature, co <coughs> cooperating with the divine will. Okay. Look at John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father. Who sent me. Beautiful. John chapter 6 verse 38. For I've come down from heaven. Not, not to do my own will. But the will of him who sent me. So the father's will. Is done by Jesus. And then by us. On earth. As it, as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Beautiful. So let's continue in our reading. Now, verses 6 through 10, only one gospel, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. For I do not for, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So let's look at verse, verse 6 for a minute. So it says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who have called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. So in verse 6, let's break this down. So in verse 6, Look at this word right here. So another or different. Strong's G, 2087, heteros, heteros. So another or different, heteros, means different in kind. We go to verse 7. And compare the two. Right here. Strong's G243. Alas. Alas. So different means different in kind. Whereas another means another the same kind. So what Paul is saying that the teach that the teaching the Galatians are listening to 
is not a harmless variation of the truth, but a completely different false gospel. This gospel, one, right, is turning away from the grace of Christ. Verse 6. It says, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Next, it brings trouble to the faithful. Look at verse. So it brings trouble to the faithful and will and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Right there in verse 7. I just stumbled up a little bit. Which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. It is a distortion of the truth. A mixture of the truth and falsehood. It is accursed. Or denounced by the church. Okay, verse 8. But, he, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you. Then what we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. So is a distortion of the truth. A mixture of the truth and falsehood. Is a curse or denounced by the church. Is intended to please men. And not God. Look at Look at verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For, for if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. We do God's will. So as we get ready to close this out, right? So Paul, so Paul is giving us a warning. So Paul's warning about we or an angel from heaven. So Paul's warning about we or an angel from heaven is not hypothetical. Angels can have delivered the gospel to us. They announced Christ's conception, right? In Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, Christ's birth announced to Mary, right? Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verses 9 through 15. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he has said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly to tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And then in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, Jesus ascends into heaven. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, and behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about Paul's warning now that we've read some of those verses, right? So in verse 8, right, what does Paul say in verse 8? It says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. So there, Paul's warning about we, so it's talking about men, right? Men like Paul. So Paul's warning about we or an angel from heaven. So it's man and also angels. This is not hypothetical. Angels can and have delivered the gospel to us, right? They've announced Christ's conception. We've read all of those. His conception, birth, resurrection, and also his ascension. But these messages that come from angels are not necessarily true. They may come from fallen angels who are also accursed. Does that make sense? And this is this morning's reading, quick reading, study over Galatians chapter 1, the first 10 verses. I hope you all have a better understanding of Galatians chapter 1, especially the first 10 verses. All right, thank you all again for following. I'm going to end my screen share. Mm -hmm. 
we close out in prayer. Thank you all again for following. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or Lord, oh Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine signal words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear as simply as here, spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of Christ. Having a blameless life and conduct without approaching Christ your authority in your life. And to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Going peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Hey, good morning. Have a blessed day. Thank you all again. Hope you enjoyed this study. I'm out.